Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Camouflage of the World, the series where we take a look at many different camouflage patterns from countries all over the world for basic recognition purposes, a brief history of the pattern, and just to have a general appreciation of different countries' takes on camouflage patterns from many different environments. I am Mike B, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Czechoslovakian VZ60 Salamander pattern. So this is a really cool pattern. It's a very, it's kind of a meme among camouflage collectors calling it clown camouflage and all that stuff but it's got some really cool history to it and uh it's pretty unique from what i've seen among other camouflage patterns so we'll kind of get into that and then we'll talk a little bit about the history and where this pattern ended up worldwide so this was like the name implies the vz or jour model 60 um was introduced in 1960 and it was to be used by the Czechoslovakian 22nd Airborne Brigade. It was kind of an elite unit um, during the Cold War, and the West knew about it and stuff. It was kind of their, I don't know, I don't know what the equivalent would be, but it was a, it was an elite unit. That's why they had their own camouflage uniforms, and they were continuously testing these during the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So this weird pattern, uh, I say it's weird, it's not just my opinion. It is, among camouflage collectors, considered to be one of the weirder, more weird camouflage patterns. I don't know. Not an English major there, sorry about that. But uh, yeah, this consists of what appears to be black or kind of a dark brown uh, shapes with olive green and tan and this really light tan slash green shade on a pale yellow background. So I don't know what they were trying to go for, what environment exactly they were trying to shoot for when they were designing this. Because this doesn't really correlate with a lot of other Central European camouflage patterns. It's very bright for Central Europe where it's more of um, a temperate woodland kind of environment. But nevertheless, they made these and they were, um, like you can see, it's a smock. You can see it's kind of long. We'll take a closer look at it here in a second. But yeah, it's a really unique pattern. It's very bright. And I think it looks cool for like a fashion flash perspective. But it's not very well liked for practical use. We'll put it that way. Um... We'll go up and take a look at it, and then we'll talk a little bit about the history of the fact after it was issued to the Czechoslovakian 22nd Airborne Brigade. As we kind of get up and take a closer look, I'm not sure what this little strap and these two straps are for, but since they're for airborne troops, it might be something to do with that or their equipment. And you can tell this is kind of a jump smock type garment. It's very long. That's why it didn't fit all the way in the frame uh, where my camera usually sits for other camouflage of the world videos with regular tunic or blouse length. So yeah, it's a little bit longer. It's this really heavy cotton, sorry about the finger. It's this really heavy cotton twill. It says, I'll show you the tags in a second, but um, it's a really heavy kind of cotton twill duck material, if you want to call it that. Very heavy duty, so I'm pretty sure it would be very strong. But yeah, you can see the five colors here, right? Uh, there's a good spot. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. And it's very, very interesting to see all these different colors, kind of this pinkish color. Um... Yeah, I don't know how well the camera's picking up this scheme. It's kind of a lime green overall tone. That just could be from the fading from this particular garment. So, all right, we'll take a look at the tags, and then we'll wrap the video up. I guess I should have said tags. I should have said stamps, knowing this is a Czechoslovakian garment. Pretty consistent with other garments of the time period. So this is dated 1961, um, or no, it's 81 it would be. I don't know, is that an 8 or... That's an 8, definitely. Okay. Anyway, so this is a size 2B, which is about a medium regular, and I don't know where that 100% cotton stamp came from, if that's after the fact, somebody imported it to the U.S. or whatever. If you're from Czechoslovakia or you know about Czechoslovakian military history stuff, let me know if that stamp is original, because I don't know why it would be in English. Anyway, yeah, there's another, some more stamps up here, and this is in the lower right-hand side, very consistent with other long jackets and parkas and stuff like that, and just regular garments of that era. So, all right, let's wrap the video up. So now you've taken a little bit of a closer look and seen this. It's kind of understandable that this pattern made its way and was found in Yemen and Palestine. So I think it would work a little bit better in a desert pattern that had more vegetation and stuff like that. So it's understandable why it would go to those two countries because that environment would be more suited than, you know, Central Europe for this. And... Yeah, it's, it's got some really cool history. It's been worn. I couldn't find any pictures of it right off the bat, but I'm sure people have them um, in the Discord server. My Patreon supporters, if you guys want to find some pictures of guys wearing these, not in a civilian setting, in an actual military setting, throw them up in the military history. Maybe I'll make a camouflage uh, channel in there. I don't know, kind of talking to you guys. Um, yeah, so that kind of brings me to my next point. If you do like these videos and all that stuff, I 
fucking... Okay. So now that we've taken a closer look at the actual garment itself and the pattern, you can kind of tell that it's not, like I said, really suited for Central European environments, but you can also understand why it would make its way and find its way to countries in the Middle East, such as Yemen and Palestine. And there are pictures floating around of Palestinian and uh, Yemenis or Yem Yemeni, I don't know what the plural for that is, soldiers wearing these or you know, paramilitary forces wearing these in various conflicts, which is pretty interesting. So it does have a lot of history to it for being a weird pattern. And it's just kind of a, it's very, it's, it, again, it's a meme, but I think it's a really cool thing to study because of the actual history of it. And it was used by Czechoslovakian forces. So that's all I've got for this. Um, I, it's really kind of a basic video. I'm sorry it wasn't longer, but I just kind of wanted to cover this one because it was a recent acquisition. Kind of just fell into my lap. So I figured uh kind of share this with you if you weren't familiar with it. So that being said, uh, Patreon supporters, if you guys are in the Discord server, try to find some pictures for me because I'm too lazy to find the pictures that I, I've seen them before, but um, post them up in the Discord so you can kind of see that and have a discussion about that, which brings me to my next point. If you like my work, like this series and the ballistic test videos and just general history videos, Korean War, you name it, do a lot of different historical topics on this channel and you want to support the channel financially to help expand the content, you can do that one or both ways if you want, but um, there's two ways to do it. Main ways is Patreon and becoming a channel member. The link to my Patreon is in the description. You can just hit the join button below this video to become a channel member. Five bucks a month or more on either platform gets you into my Discord server, which I just mentioned. A lot of cool information is exchanged there. There's getting to be a lot of people on there, so it's pretty cool to be able to talk. Um, once in a while we do cool things on there. Well, it, it's just fun all the time. I learn a lot of stuff. So Anyway, that's an incentive if you want to help expand the content because I can only afford to do so much funding out of pocket. And this year has been great for my uh, Patreon support, crowdfunding in general, because I've been able to do a lot of really cool videos that otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. So if you want to do that, you know how to do it. If you can't support the channel financially, I totally get that. You watching this supports it. Hitting the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and also share this video out if you think it's interesting. So those are ways you can support my work if you really want to. But with that being said, I just appreciate you watching. And we'll see you on the next episode of Camouflage of the World.